an emergency can disrupt a routine day at any time. And in a moment, you can suddenly be faced with a life and death situation. Knowing and practicing your facility's Emergency Action Plan, or EAP, is a vital part of creating a culture of safety. Swift activation of the EAP may keep an emergency from becoming a tragedy. EAPs clearly identify who does what and describes how to respond to emergencies, both on land and in the water. EAPs should also factor in the unique characteristics of the facility and in the staffing patterns. Be mindful that EAPs may vary by activity and time of day. Yep. As members of the safety team, it's critical for coaches to know their role when an emergency occurs. To be effective, teams should practice EAP drills regularly, using a variety of simulated emergency situations. It is also important that all safety team members know the facility's communication system. Let's take a look at an EAP for water rescues. The first step is recognizing that someone is in need of immediate help. The lifeguard, a coach, or another swimmer may recognize that someone is in trouble and needs help. If a coach or swimmer notices someone in trouble, a lifeguard should be notified immediately. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that a certified lifeguard be on duty at all times at your aquatics facility during practices and meets to have the sole responsibility to perform surveillance. They are specifically trained to conduct surveillance over all persons in water, observe swimmers' behaviors, search for signals that someone in the water needs help, and are specifically trained in water rescue and extrication procedures in an emergency. The second step is to use the facility's prearranged signal to activate the emergency action plan. The type of prearranged signal used, such as a long whistle blast, will put the appropriate response in motion. As a swim coach, you may not be the first rescuer in an emergency at your facility, but as a safety team member, your role, as outlined by the EAP, is essential. For potentially life-threatening emergencies, Safety team members, like coaches, may be called upon to clear the area, control bystanders, or quickly bring the standard emergency equipment to the scene, such as backboard for extrication, an AED, a bag valve mask, and other first aid equipment and supplies. An unresponsive victim in the water will need to be extracted from the water. In facilities with two or more lifeguards on duty, lifeguards will typically be responsible for extricating the victim from the water. In some cases, such as when one lifeguard is on duty, coaches or other safety team members may be required to assist with extrication. After extricating the victim from the water, members of the safety team must provide appropriate emergency care as needed. Whenever it is apparent that a victim is in a life-threatening situation, a member of the safety team must call 911 or the designated emergency number, even if bystanders may have made an earlier call. Once EMS has been called, someone should wait at the entrance of the facility to direct the emergency responders to the victim's location. If all safety team members are busy providing care, a bystander, such as a swimmer or parent, may be willing to assist by waiting for EMS and directing them to the scene. It is important to keep the path clear for the emergency medical responders to reach the victim quickly and then move them to the ambulance for transport. Remember, emergencies can take place anywhere in your facility, not just in the water. You may need to respond to an emergency away from the water, such as the pool deck, locker room, facility entrance, or concession area. If you're in a location that might prevent the EAP signal from being heard, like in a locker room or outside of the facility, try to get anyone nearby to alert another staff member. You should stay with the victim and continue necessary emergency care. Once an emergency has been resolved, members of the safety team still have three important tasks to complete. Report, advise, and if appropriate, release. Filling out an incident report needs to be done before the victim is released. If you are the first rescuer, 
it is your responsibility to fill out and sign the form. This documentation is very important for legal purposes, in addition to the ongoing tracking of incidents that occur in the facility. A member of the safety team may need to record contact information for witnesses to the emergency. Be sure to follow the facility's policies in gathering witness information or statements. The next step may be to advise the victim if they are no longer in a serious or life-threatening condition. You may need to instruct them about preventing the same accident in the future, or you may recommend that they follow up the incident with a visit to their personal health care provider. Releasing the victim is the final step of the EAP. This only occurs when the rescue and any emergency care provided by you or your safety team are complete. Emergencies come without warning. As a member of the safety team, you must be ready to respond whenever or wherever they occur. Knowing your emergency action plan helps you respond with confidence during an emergency. Study it, practice it, and above all, be prepared to implement the emergency action plan when an emergency happens.